except for Hensington Hall, which was almost derelict at that time. It was a clean slate. I'd never had a clean slate to work on before, on such a scale. That was magic as far as I was concerned. I saw the university as a large-scale experiment which should be tested as it grew. We designed a system of covered ways connecting the buildings together in such a way that to go from any building to another building you had to go through another one to promote informal contact and mixing and so on. What I inherited was the master plan for the campus by Andrew Derbyshire which always anticipated growth. It was very cleverly designed, so each college had a core and a periphery of rooms which were both academic and residential. And the idea always was that as departments grew, they grew out into the residential bits and you created new colleges. So that, that I inherited. The site was in fact a bog. And the ground survey indicated that water levels were very high, even on the hill. And we knew that therefore there'd be an increased runoff due to more hard surfaces, roofs and so on and we'd have to cope with this runoff somehow or other. We said to the university, we really think it's essential for our purposes and the university wants to have a lake. Can we have a bit more money? It's not a lot, it'll be very cheap. We wanted to make a variety of different relationships between buildings and water and we wanted to establish a circular walk around the lake which would go in and out of buildings and into, into the grass and then onto a bridge and so on. I found at York that there was lots of space that could be developed and wasn't being fully used. So there was a lot of potential to grow. You didn't want to develop too many buildings on the campus because you wanted to keep the parkland impression, which is very real and very important, so that the footprint of buildings was always going to be a maximum of 24%. One of the main features about the Heslington East campus was a requirement to really mirror the best features of Heslington West. So that is buildings that are set at a, a human scale, also looking at a very quality environment setting, and then finally the integration of both academic, residential and social spaces all together. Now because the scale of the university has grown since its inception in the 1960s, that had to be done in a modern idiom. It wasn't just a question of doing development for its own sake, there's no point in that. The, the pressure was from departments who needed to grow in order to be fully internationally competitive. So a good example is computer science. Brilliant department, had old buildings, needed a new building, so we built them a new building. Heslington East allows us to redevelop the existing campus on Heslington West. The old 1960s buildings are getting tired. Those students that are resident in them appreciate that the quality of the accommodation isn't as good as that that's on Heslington East. So we need to improve both the residential teaching and also the social spaces on Heslington West. Because we can now decant departments onto Heslington East, it gives us a space to allow us to redevelop Heslington West. And I'm currently working on a 10-year plan for the redevelopment of Heslington West. It's all very embarrassing. I mean, most people think I'm dead. Or, or they think I paid for it. I don't... No, it's fine. The building's excellent. It's pity about the name, but there you go.